Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is a quick update about the RX480 Strix and some of my thermal testing on the cards. So, last video I did about this card, I complained about the thermal performance on it and that it was really, really underwhelming, and I also wanted to inves investigate the fact that this card really does not improve by adding more airflow to it. Like, um, yeah. You know, your temperatures don't change very much if you crank up the fan speed, which I find really annoying because if you're benchmarking, you max out the fan speed and because you don't care about noise levels. And if you max out the fan speed and it does basically nothing for the performance of the heatsink, well, that's a bit of a problem. So, in that video, I said that I would also investigate the, uh, the, the heat pipes on the card. And, well... Uh, I did try measure the difference in temperature between the heat pipes, and I did find that the outermost heat pipe is about five degrees cooler than the centermost heat pipe, but I'm not actually sure if that impacts how well it transfers heat into the fin stack that it's connected to, because I was monitoring the temperature on that heat pipe right as it gets away from the GPU core, which at the time seemed like a great idea, but after I actually got the numbers, I realized, well, it's not like it's running ice cold, so I don't actually know if there's a problem. So I'm going to probably have to redo those tests, and at this point I kind of don't want to because I've actually managed to fix most of this heatsink's performance issues. And that brings me to my second point. This card had some really bad thermal paste on it in, in, when, I, when I first got it. Because basically what I've done is, well, what I do for all of the GPU reviews, and so far I've done exactly two, because, you know, channels just sort of starting out, and, and, and well, all the rev reviews are always written, so, yeah. But I decided that for GPU reviews, I would always do a test on stock thermal paste for thermals, because, and then also do a test on uh, replaced thermal paste, in my case, Cryonaut, because Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut is undisputably one of the best pastes out there. So, during testing with the Cryonaut, I noticed something very interesting. The card was running actually at acceptable temperatures, so what the hell happened? Well, um, replacing the thermal paste on this thing dropped temperatures by a whopping 8 degrees in the worst case scenario. Um, it did have smaller impacts somewhere along the line, for example at... Uh, you know, at normal stock settings, the card only dropped about 6 degrees at 35% fan speed, but then it dropped 8 degrees at 40% fan speed, so, you know, the, the results are sort of... sort of basically, you're gonna lose a lot of temperature by just replacing the thermal paste. Max out fan speed is the scenario where there's the least difference in temperature, where at stock settings it was, went down by 4 degrees and it, you know, uh, on the OC settings, it only went down by 5 degrees. But at lower fan speeds, there's an 8 degree, like, OC settings, 35% fan speed, there's an 8 degree drop. They're just, like, huge drops just across the board with the card. And that's concerning on an RX 480 because these cards are extremely, extremely temperature sensitive. An RX 480 running at 80 degrees is noticeably less stable than one running at 70 degrees. And an 8 degree temperature drop is, you know big enough to actually make those kinds of differences. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a problem. And I'm glad that the thermal paste solved it, because now if you have an RX 480 Strix and you're having issues with the thermals, well, try replacing the thermal paste, because it'll probably drop a huge, a huge number of temp... Like, you know, it'll lower the temperature a huge amount. And you don't even have to use Thermal Grizzly. I only use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, because, well, it's the best paste I have, and I don't really have any other high-end pastes. Everything else I have is just cheap stuff that I use for uh, testing purposes when it's like, well, I just need to know if it boots, not if it's actually usable. So, yeah. Um, you could replace, you know, the thermal paste with G uh, Gelid GC Extreme. That's a really good one. Noctua NTH1 is a, also a pretty good paste. Um, th there's a whole bunch of them. Even Arctic MX2 isn't that far behind Thermal Grizzly to give you the same temperature drop that I got here. So, yeah, uh, the thermal paste on this thing was atrocious. Now, even with the thermal paste replacement, this thing still doesn't get better delta temperatures than the GTR. And the reason for that is this 
as I said in my last video, is definitely not a lucky RX 480. This is a, I'd say lower 50% of RX 480s as of right now. Um, and basically during the overclock testing, I had to run the card at 1370 megahertz, but with 1.2 volts V core. And at those settings, it was pulling significantly more power than the GTR, which I tested at 1450 or 1420, I think 1420, and also 1 1.2 volts V core. So the GTR running at a higher frequency, at higher voltage, well, same voltage, higher frequency, pulls less power than this thing. Um, which means that this thing, you know, this heatsink is just about matching the GTRs with, with the replacement thermal paste. So this has a better heatsink than the GTR. Now it's actually performing just straight up better than the GTR. Uh, even when, when I replace the thermal paste on the GTR, this is still performing better because this heatsink has to dissipate a lot more heat due to the variance in the GPU cores. Which really annoys me because that means if I'm going forward, thermal testing is going to be a massive pain because I'm going to have to deal with the fact that some cards just out of the box run on way more power than all you know other cards and it also makes me realize that if you're a like that other review sites who do thermal testing for GPUs you know it's like th that's a, that's an issue you know if 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 one partner if one review sample is like you know a top 1% card it's going to pull a lot less power than some of the other review samples and even if the coolers aren't that different if there's a 30 40 watt power draw difference between the two cards the one would like one of them is going to have noticeably lower temperatures not necessarily because it has a better heat sink but because the card just is a luckier you know is a better better silicon uh, just won the silicon lottery so I'm, I'm really annoyed about that because that means first of all a lot of testing results out there must be like I don't think account for that so I you know they're suspect for that being an issue and also for my own testing it means I need to find a way to get all the cards to pull the same power when testing them which is just really really infuriating because that's really really hard to do I currently don't have proper power measurement equipment I pretty much, like, as of right now, the only thing I can measure is uh, PCIe input, th this one. I can measure the power draw on that. I can't draw, uh, measure the PCIe slot yet because I need to get some, I need to get some kind of externally wired uh, powered extender or something uh, and measure off of that. So that needs to, that, that's just sort of, yeah, I'll take care of that eventually. And then I'll upgrade the testing methodology. But for now, I'll just note down what kind of software reported power values I'm getting for, for the RX 480s, because other cards don't even get power readings, which is, that's, that's the big issue I see. For RX 480s, not a big deal. But for uh, Furies, you can't read power draw on those. For, I don't know about NVIDIA cards. So I guess th those should all read power draw, but that's going to be full power, full board power draw, not GPU core power draw. So ugh. The, yeah, it's, it's just like that. That's going to be a massive pain to to deal with somehow. Um, so yeah, and even on the RX 480s, measuring just the core is going to be ugh, that sucks. OK, well, yeah, so that's an issue. The other thing I want to address, uh, I've, you know, heard that well, I've read a lot of comments stating that the RX 480 Strix has really low uh, software limits for like temperature and power draw. Um, this is not true at all. Um, I don't know where this comes from. I don't know if somebody read a review or if some reviewer said, oh yeah, our card has a 70 degree temperature limit or whatever. This in the BIOS has the exact same power draw and temperature limits as my GTR and my reference RX 480. I haven't tested any other RX 480s, so I don't know about those BIOSes. I should have probably got on the GPU uh, Tech Power Up GPU BIOS database and, and just checked those. But still, I, I really, really doubt there is a single BIOS out there with a different power limit from that 110 watt figure. You know, it's like, yeah. So basically, this doesn't have a lower power limit and it doesn't have a lower temperature limit either. But if everybody, if all the other reviewers were testing this sample right here, I wouldn't be surprised if they had temperature issues or power issues or whatever, because this thing pulls a lot of power. 
even on stock settings. On stock settings, it's already pulling about 120 watts. Luckily, I didn't notice any throttling during testing, but that just might be because of the workload I'm using. If you were using a more heavy workload, I failed to see what would be heavier than GT1 of Firestrike. But if you found a heavier workload, like for Mark, which you shouldn't use, but let's say you did because you have issues or whatever, and well, then this card would throttle hard because this thing pulls a 120 watt stock. So it's already exceeding its own TDP limit just as is. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Basically, the, the card, card is fine. The thermal pace is terrible. It doesn't really improve with fan speed. And the full review of the card, including noise levels, as well as very nice temperature curves, uh, will be going up soon, because I, I need to still do photos. And as you can clearly see, that desk, that desk behind me, that one, yeah, that desk, um, is covered in crap. And that's the one I use for photo shoots, because there is that, that other sort of desk board thing up against the wall. So when I do photos, uh, you don't have to look at the walls in this, in this flat here, because they're awful. Um, they're this off yellow color. Well, they're like really pale yellow and really dirty because I, I don't think they've ever been washed. Like, they were that bad when I moved in. It's not my fault. So, yeah. So that's that for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Drop a comment down below about anything you want to comment on, including complaining about this video. Um, what else is there? Right. It'd be great. If you donated to the AHOC Patreon, as you know, that, that helps out with buying testing equipment, LN2, hardware that I can't ask for, which surprisingly is a lot of stuff, you know. You'd think being an 8,000, like, yeah, 8,000 subscribers doesn't get you free hardware as much as I'd like it to, um, unfortunately. But, yeah, so, you know, patronize me. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.